Here at Acor Media, we wanted to create a place where we could talk about politics in a way that promotes civil discourse with truth and respect. We do that right here in the arena. I'm Philip Britt, your host, and today I'm proud to welcome Dunklin County Deputy and candidate for Dunklin County Sheriff Aaron Wainick in the arena. Welcome, Aaron. It's good to be here. Glad to have you with us. Yes, sir. Um, first of all, tell us who Aaron Wainick is, a little bit about yourself. Well, I was born and raised in Kennett. Uh, I've lived there just about all my life. Um, we lived in Jackson, Tennessee for four years, so my mother could finish nursing school. She graduated from uh, Union University. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, I've been, I've been a Dunklin County resident all my life. Good deal. So you're running for sheriff. Um, you're running to replace Sheriff Bob Holder. He was, he's decided to retire. Uh, he was first elected in 1996. Yes, sir. Um, he's completing his seventh term as uh, Dunklin County Sheriff. So what are you hearing from the voters? You're out there among, among the voters of Dunklin County uh, who are about to elect a sheriff really for the first time in 28 years. So 28 what are you years. hearing from those folks? A lot of them, some, some of them are ready for a change. Some of them, some of them are, you know, still can't believe that, that he's gonna retire. Um, I think, you know, change is something that, that everybody's like, I don't know, you know, they, they kind of sit on the edge. They, they kind of want it, but sometimes they don't. And change is always different. I mean, it's just, it, 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 it's in the name. <laughs> Absolutely. You know. Well, um, and, and that's something that, that, you know, and we can talk a little bit more later about how, you know, you might handle things differently or, or your office may be different, but, um, but for the people of Dunklin County, you know, this is, this is something new for a lot of folks. It is. I mean, 30 years, 28 years, you know, I've got a son who's 27, be 28 this fall. So basically Bob Holder has been the sheriff as long as he's been alive. And so, he's, and he's and, been an awesome one. Yeah, he has been. And, he, and, and my son's been voting for 10 years. So there are folks that have been voting for 10 years that have never, you know, and more longer, that have never voted for anybody else or had the opportunity to vote for anybody else because no one ever ran against him because he did such a good job. Right. Um, so this is your first opportunity to be in the arena um, as, you know, putting your name on the ballot to be elected. Um, what made you think that now's the right time for that? I, my years of experience, um, Bob and I have talked about it for probably a little over 10 years. Mm -hmm. I think he was kind of trying to gear himself up to get ready for retirement. I, I, I know when you get to that stage in life, it's, it's a big step. But I think he's, I think he's ready. Um, he's done an awesome job, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, so what makes you, you mentioned your experience, but what other things, you know, let's say what makes a good sheriff, but what makes you, um, Aaron Wainick, the right guy to be the sheriff? I would say experience is probably the biggest thing. I, yeah, not just experience in and of itself, but I also have experience with the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. um, I worked 15 and a half years at the Kennett Police Department. Um, and I started from the ground up when I was 18, learning the radio lingo, learning to be a dispatcher, take, you know, get the right information when calls come in. And that also helps you develop communication skills on the radio, talking to people on the phone. Um, so I, I know the job from the ground up not just learning to be a, a police officer, but I, I learned how to be a dispatcher first. Um, and I think having some experience at the sheriff's office is key as well, just because there's a lot of things you do as a deputy that you don't do as a city cop, like we serve all kinds of writs. Um, you're also an officer of the court. Um, there, there's just a lot more responsibility there than just being a city police officer. And I think having experience at the sheriff's office is, is huge. How long have you been at the sheriff's department? It'll be nine years in August. Okay. Um, and what, what have your duties been at the sheriff's office? I know you're a road deputy, but what have your duties yeah, been there? The, 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 the job of being a police officer is pretty much the same other mm -hmm. than your jurisdictions countywide, not just confined to the city. Um, so the calls for service are the same. You got domestics and, you know, the thefts and shopliftings. And then, of course, the, this more serious stuff with the homicides and, you know, kidnappings serious assaults. Um, I've been the assistant commander of Major K Squad since 2018 or 2019. Um, and they investigate all major crime in Dunklin County. Right. Um, Let's the, talk about the, that a little bit before you move on to something else. The, the Major K Squad uh, was created, you know, many, many years before ago. Before I was in law enforcement. Right, exactly. Um, and it's, it's hugely beneficial because 
uh, it essentially incorporates all the the law enforcement in, in uh, the most county. of the agencies put some of their best investigators, some of their 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 better trained or more experienced police officers in that, and it takes the burden of of an investigation like a homicide off that one department. You Absolutely. can kind of spread it out because there, there's hundreds of leads that come in when you're working something like that. That's so. right. I mean, we, you know, I, I remember being in the prosecutor's office and, and the case book that we'd put together, investigation book, would be so thick. Thick. Because back then it was all paper. Yes, sir. You know, now and I'm, we still keep a paper copy. Okay. Well, so, you know, and so you'd have a huge thick, um, and, and they were all lead, different leads, you yes. know, and you're right, hundreds of them, th tips that would come in or, uh, and, and really, none of the um, none of our jurisdictions, with maybe Kennett as an exception, you know, have the kind of experience and size of a law enforcement um, of a police force to handle a, a, a double homicide. I remember one particularly here in Malden that we had when I was in the prosecutor's office that the major case squad was called out immediately, um, and it was it was a double murder here in Malden, and there's no way that the the city police. Uh, at that point in time could have could have handled that on their own and all right. the things that had to go along with it so um, so tell, tell us a little more about your experience the uh, and and just to hit a note on the major case squad that you also bring in the state the state right. the state has guys and they have a lot more resources than any of us mm -hmm. do as far as you know people and the things that they can bring to the table on those so we have a lot of, of small communities and and almost all of our our towns um, have a city marshal or uh, maybe one or two uh, officers, but they may not be, they may not have 24 hour around the clock. Uh, they may be on call, but they may not be on duty all the time. Um, so what is what is the sheriff's office responsibility when it comes to those small towns? We, we, we have had to fill in the gaps for a lot of those smaller towns that don't have coverage right now. Um, there's several on the south end uh, that you know, the Cardinal had one there for a little while, and they don't have anybody right now. So we're covering all the calls for service for that. Um, and I, I guess the biggest burden on the sheriff's office would be that they're they're not receiving any tax money from Cardinal for that service right. because they they weren't providing that prior to. Um, not that we're not going to pick up the slack and, sure. and and do what needs to be done, but um, those cities either, in my opinion, they need to they need to get someone in place or they need to work with the sheriff's office and the, and the commission on, on trying to come up with a way to, to fund some more deputies to cover some of that. Sure, sure. You know, and that's, and that's a challenge for small towns. I mean, Absolutely. They, you know, I was, I in fact was the, uh, was the uh, city attorney prosecutor for the city of Cardinal for a while, um, years and years ago when they did have a couple of officers. But you know, there's just not, there's not a lot of calls you're gonna get down there just because right. it's such a small community. Um, but when you do, they need somebody. When That's somebody a, calls 911, yes. they need somebody to show up. And so, um, you know, I'm glad that the, the Sheriff's Department is able to, to at least cover And, and I would right like now. to incorporate some satellite offices on the north end and the south end, just because when we, whether we get a petty theft report or something more serious, we have to go somewhere and type that report. And Makes most sense. of us have computers in the car but I'm not going to sit in my car and type a report. It's too dangerous. Right. You, you, right. You, when I'm typing a report, I don't know about you. If you're on the computer, you're not really paying attention to your surroundings. That's right. And then, of course, you're going to have to come back to the office if you collect any kind of evidence or anything mm -hmm. like that. You've got to bring that back to the office because it has to be processed right. and either sent to the crime lab or just, just stored. So, mm -hmm. uh, But I think having a place for those guys to go and use the bathroom, take sure. a break, type reports, you know. Right. It, it also cuts down on the response time if we're at the office and have mm -hmm. to drive. 25 miles north or 25 miles south. Sure, so. because it is, you know Dunklin County is a long county. I Very mean, it's, long. It's a long ways from from Malden to Red Cardinal Onion. or Hornersville. Yeah, yeah, exactly, sir. exactly right. Um, all right, so so one of the questions that I have is, you know, what are the main things from a law enforcement perspective, the issues that are facing us as as a county in Dunklin County? Some of those that we just talked about with some of the shortage. I mean, and, and the shortage for police officers is really nationwide it's mm -hmm. not just confined to us we've got a pretty solid crew when we're at the sheriff's office i mean we've got bob's done a really good job of keeping pretty solid police officers there and i, I would just like to build from that and mm -hmm. you know keep the strongest team the county's ever seen but uh the theft and drugs go hand in hand um but it's a never-ending battle mm -hmm. you can arrest 10 tonight and there's going to be 20 more replace them tomorrow right um, but but the the stealing and the, and the drugs go hand in hand and I mean other than getting out and doing what we do I don't, uh, 
we can't be everywhere at once, but I think adding more, more folks to, to patrol would, would help that out tremendously. Well, and one of the things that I've always said is that you, we can't combat the problem of drugs on the supply side. We have, to, we have to combat it on the demand side. So we have to find a way to, uh, to treat those who, are, who, are, uh, who have a substance use disorder because they're the ones that are stealing in order to buy uh, you know, their drugs. Because that's true, that, but, but uh, not all of those folks want help. No, that's right. I understand I mean, that. I understand um, that. I wish they but did. But I'm saying that's the, way, that, that, yeah. that's the way we combat it. Yes. Uh, from, the, from the supply side, there's always going to be somebody else that steps in. I remember we did, back when I was in the prosecutor's office, we did a, uh, we had a grand jury, and we, I think we rounded up 30 or 40 people that we had indicted and that were all arrested in one day. Um, and you could go out maybe two weeks later in the same spot where they had gotten, you know, the, the case had been made on them, there'd be somebody else in that spot. Absolutely. Um, and that was that was in the throes of, of the crack cocaine epidemic. Yes. So there was tons of crack cocaine well, in, the in the community. All the street corner buys. And, and so it was, a, but it was a bad, it was a terrible situation. Um, and one so, thing that's compounded that problem is the, the evolution of cell phones. Mm -hmm. um, they, they're not, a lot of them don't do the hand to hand transaction. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen because it does, but. Right. You know, they can make a phone call or a text and say, meet me here, and right. you know, Walmart parking lot or mm -hmm. a gas station parking lot or wherever. I right. mean, they, they just, right. it, it's made it more difficult. Yeah, so they don't have to stand there and wait for somebody to drive right. up to we, them. We can't park down the street and watch it happen anymore. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Got to put a little bit more effort into it. Right, right. Are there other issues uh, that you see in Dunklin County um, besides the drugs and stealing? That's obviously always going to be a real challenge for us. I would say the most challenging thing for me if elected sheriff is going to be probably the jail. There are, there, the sheriff's told me for years that that jail is going to be a pain every day. Mm -hmm. And he's been doing it for 28 years, and right. I'm sure it was a pain the first day he walked in, and it's going to be a pain the last day he's there. So. And it was more of a pain the first day he walked in. Because Absolutely. Because we were in the jail over on yes, Slicer, Slicer Street, Street, which was not a good place to be. Right. Yeah. You know, upstate of the art in the 70s when uh, it was Exactly. Big, but, it, it was, uh, but in 1995, when I went to work in the prosecutor's office, <laughs> it, it was, was, uh, it was out of date. Of the That's art. correct. Right. That's right. Um, and, and so, the, I mean, the facility is much better, um, but, yeah, you're going to have challenges every day when you're well, housing you're, people. You're, you got there are lots of challenges. Keep Keeping personnel there, I mean, pay is always going to be an issue. Right. You, I mean, you, you got to stay competitive with things that are around you. And, Unfortunately, the county just can't afford to pay like places like New Court and things right. like that. You know, you can drive 40 miles down the road from, from where we're from in Kennett and right. make over $100,000 a year. That's just not going to happen at the sheriff's office. Right. Right. And in, in, you know, in the, the jail setting where you're, you're working as a, as a corrections officer, basically, it's a challenge because, you know, they're going to be paid a little less than you're going to be paid on the road, and they may find something that's a whole lot less dangerous and a whole lot less stressful. Absolutely, for, it, it, for it's comparable money. It's stressful for those, and you know, we get a lot of young folks that apply for it, and they get in there and go, "Oh my, this is what this, this is, is what, what I, yeah, this is this is not at all what I was expecting." But yeah. you're, I mean, you're really, you're, you're having to, for lack of a better term, babysit criminals. I mean, right. that, that and that's what they're doing. So. That's a, and it's a real challenge. So. Yes, absolutely. So you've been in law enforcement for quite a while. I mean, yes, how many sir. years have you been in law enforcement total? Uh, be 27 okay. September, October. Okay. Um, um, so what are the things that you've seen change about Dunklin County? Not just the, the crim not just from a law enforcement perspective, but just the county itself. What have you, what changes have you seen in the county in those, that period of time? Or in Kennett, where you're more familiar? What I mean, you you talk about just from a law enforcement. Perspective? No, just from a what it, what changes have you seen in the in the county? Um, th there's a lot of we we talked about the 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 stealing and the drugs going hand in hand, but um, the lack of industry I think mm -hmm. is is a problem, and and us not having a hospital to or at least an emergency room. You know, centrally located in in the in the county is a Absolutely. is a problem, um, and it, it it has to put a damper on places that are looking to come to Kennett. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think there's folks that are in the right places that are trying to address that. Right. Um, but I, I, those are, you know, and for us, um, if if something were to happen to one of us in the field, you you want to have somebody that can get you stable to get you somewhere where they can get you took care of. And right. 
right now, the, I mean, the closest one we have to Kennett is Haytide, and I think up here at Malden, Dexter's the closest. Um, right. You know, so they're shipping a lot of people from Kennett to either Haytide or Pigott, and up right. here they're either going to Bluff or Dexter, and down south you got Paragould, and if, if they're life flighted, a lot of times if they're stable enough to fly, they'll, they'll, they'll go to Memphis. But, right. um, so yeah, so that's a huge challenge for us, and it's certainly absolutely. one that, as a you know, as a um, you know, as a sheriff and, and in charge of the sheriff's department, that's a that's a big issue. Absolutely. Um, yeah, when you have close to two hundred inmates, I mm -hmm. mean, you, and you you have to take those guys to the hospital when they get sick too. Absolutely. So, I, mean, I absolutely. hear the sheriff going ten forty one at you know three or four o'clock in the morning. He's having to run a, an inmate to either hay tie or something and and get them checked out. So that's one other question um, that I have for you. It almost doesn't matter what time a person drives past the Justice Center, you're almost always gonna see the sheriff's truck there. Yes, sir. <laughs> so my question is, are you gonna have the same hours as Bob Holder? Because he works extremely late, uh, he, extremely he early. He does. I, I will always be subject to call. Somebody can call me and I'll come out. I, but, and I've been that way my entire career. Yeah, though. The, the guys at Kennett, when I worked there, a lot of times I was already getting up and putting my clothes on when I heard something going on on the radio. Because I listened yeah. to the scanner at home. And, and a lot of times I was already getting ready. I knew I was gonna get called out, but I was already getting ready or I was already in route when I, when I got the phone call. So right. I, that won't be a problem for me at all. Uh, he, I just have always been amazed by the fact that he's always- Yeah, we, we always <laughs> used to joke that he slept in his uniform. <laughs> I think that's he, accurate. He, he, he kept it pressed and- I was gonna say, go it, looks, sure. it always looks good too, <laughs> so. All right, one last question. If you're fortunate enough to win this election, um, you know, what does the Dunklin County Sheriff's Office look like under Sheriff Aaron Wainick? I, I, I'm going to leave with experience and integrity, and I, I have I have the experience to lead the sheriff's office in the years to come, and um, I just ask and would appreciate everybody's vote. Okay. Um, Any big changes you would expect? Or I mean, there will be a few. Uh, some of those are hard to talk about because you might make the wrong person mad. Oh, sure. And, you know, um, but there will be a few. And like I said, we, you know, before nobody really likes change until they do it, and they go, "Well, that's really not that bad." Right. Um, but it's not going to be anything that's not necessary. Um, not just change for the sake of change. Right. Not just changing it to change it, but change it for the better, I hope. And, you know, I, there, there's always moving parts with that because you have to work with the commission on things. When You know, you can always make that pipe dream. We're going to add more people and we're going right. to do this and we're going to do that. But um, the reality is you have to work with those people and you have to work within a budget. So. Well, Aaron, thank you for joining us. I want to give you the last word. So I'm going to let you look right into that camera over there and talk to the people of Dunklin County. Yes, sir. I appreciate you having me on. Mm -hmm. And um, I would just like to ask for everyone's vote in the upcoming election in August of 2024. Um, I've been a lifelong resident of Dunklin County. Uh, I've been doing the job over 25 years, close to 27. Um, and I started from the ground up. And I, I believe I have the tools to, to lead the sheriff's office in the years to come. Thank you. Well, thank you, Aaron, for joining us. Appreciate you Good having me. Good luck to you. Yes, sir. Aaron Wainick, Deputy uh, for the Dunklin County Sheriff's Department, candidate for Dunklin County Sheriff in the August election. Good luck in the arena.